So, oh, I almost had a good rotation there. Hey, how about a six leaf? Let's get it out of here. We're going to check this thing in, and then we're going to check it out. Boy, I got a bunch of these backlogged. I have bought some six leaves. Oh, okay. So, man, I'm kind of excited for this one. I remember seeing it online. It's kind of funky lime green. <laughs> oh, focus, man. What are we doing here? There we go. Wow. How cool is this thing? And it has super texture. I mean, this may be one of the most grippy knives I own. Wow. They have they have chewed up this G10 and made it uber grippy. Now, they run this way, but it don't matter because there's some additional milling underneath there that, man, is this thing grippy. All right, let's get rid of this stuff. And then we're going to completely check it in so we can check it out. And you know what's coming next. It's not oily, so let's get in it. Let's see what's up. Ready? Oh, man. Wow. Come on. Yeah, so this is a rattlesnake SL-16 in D2 steel. It's got a nice coating on it. The blade's a little greasy. Let me wipe it off. I mean, we're going to... We're going to get in here. We'll wipe the whole thing off. But I do like this gray coating. I don't, you know, I'll be honest. I don't have the specs on that. So I don't know if that's like a titanium coating or, you know, what the details are on that. Let's check this button. Yeah, completely drop shut. When you press this button, this thing's free wheeling, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, just like that. No tension on it at all. So now the question is, how locked up is it? Let's try the Spidey Flick. Yeah, perfect detent. Yeah, hey, y'all, that is solid as a rock. Solid, man. Like absolutely no play in there whatsoever. And there's none released from that button either. So just solid lockup and no lock stick. None. Wow, there's a fuller. That works with the thumb. Not so much with the uh, Spidey Flick. And it's because it's not a real sharp edge. But the Spidey Flick on the butt, on the thumb stud, that works. Man, it's this thing. Listen to it. It's got great sound. Wow. Yeah, man. So I'm kind of faked out because I thought this was a bigger knife when I bought it. It just appeared bigger. Hey, let's put Dilly Dallying. Let's all go. Let's open it up. Let's get in here, completely check it in. So there wasn't a lot of tension on that. No Loctite on it. TH across the board. I don't know if this pocket clip's got to come off, but yeah, it did. There's a hidden screw underneath that pocket clip. So it's recessed into the scale. This, this screw's also a T8. I mean, I could tell you on the surface of this knife that just the quality of... I mean, it's just G10 with some steel liners, but the quality of how this is put together, all these T8s, I, it's improving. As I go from knife to knife, um, this thing's improving. And this is the SL16, so I don't know, like, because 
I think one I checked in the other day was like the SL24. So I don't know, is this an older model? I, I don't have that information. I don't know if it is. Um, I better focus on what I'm doing here. This, this scale is kind of captured on these spacers down here. And the button, or, well, that's not the button, thumb studs. Come on. There it goes. And it's a little oily in here. It's not bad, but it's a little oily. So I can clean some of this up. And and when I say that, I just mean there's oil in some places that don't need to be there. So these these bearings were opposite. One was one's down to the scale and one's to the blade. This shows a captured pin and it's captured on this side. On this scale. Everything is fitting really tight. I mean, yeah, really tight fitment on everything. Here again, it's just a, just a G10 knife. You know, there's nothing spectacular going on here, but I mean, I got to tell you on the surface of this one so far, I mean, you may not be a fan of this lime green, which, I don't know, could this be dyed? I've never dyed G10. I see, you know, people talk about it and that they do it fairly regularly, um, like it's no big deal. But me personally, I've never done it. I don't know that... Uh, there we go. Completely disassembled. So now it's... It's towel and talk time. I can wipe everything and I could talk about what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever wanted to modify a knife like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. And I get why people do it, you know, customizes it a little bit. Um, I, you know, I, it's, I guess it's just not me. Like, hey, I've owned custom motorcycles throughout my life, but... They were built that way. Um, I I kind of modified a stock motorcycle once, um, but mostly just mechanically, you know, like the engine, and then kind of leave it. Like, and I, I think the reason is is because in most cases, things are engineered, you know, like there's time put into them. And so, I think what I, you know, I, so here's probably the best example I have. I've had some trucks throughout my life that, for whatever reason, I thought it would be cool to lift the truck, put a suspension kit on it and big tires or whatever. And every time I've ever done that, in hindsight, I feel like I ruined the truck. They don't ride the same they don't handle, you know, highway speeds the same. Like, there's some turnpikes running through South Texas that the speed limit's like 85 miles an hour. And uh, there's some in Oklahoma now that are 80. And so, you know, I, I mean, I'm not saying you should go out there and break the law, but if it's 80, I mean, there's a good chance that you know, I might find myself creeping up on 90 or 92. Well, you know, if I'm running to the coast for a couple of days at R&R, &R, um, and I'm all of a sudden I'm running, you know, 90 in my lifted truck, I, you find out pretty quick that it's not built to do that. You know, that lift kit isn't, <laughs> is it made for speed, man? It looks good. 
you know, and I guess you could go mud bogging, but you know, I honestly, I haven't taken a truck mud bogging since I was in my early twenties, because again, you know, you, you take a truck into red mud and you'll never get that, you know, Oklahoma red mud. You'll never get that out of every joint seam bearing. I mean, that stuff, that stuff will get into everything and pretty quick, every part of your, your vehicle is squeaking. So, so, I mean, I've lifted trucks and put big tires on, but not so I can go down to the river and run it through mud. Uh, because I don't, man, I would never do that to a new truck, but I, I see people do it. I'm just saying I wouldn't because it ruined, I mean, it r literally ruins the truck. In my opinion, you can't, no matter how many times you wash it or take it to the car wash or whatever you're going to do to it, you can't, you can't clear that red mud. You can't get it off. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm backwards. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense now. This goes here and the button goes down. The only thing I need to do is pay attention to this pivot. So I'm, I'm kind of the way with my knives. I mean, there's something like I'll, I'll change some things. But for the most part, I'm okay with just leaving it the way that I got it. Yeah, so that's like that. Okay. Uh, bearing. Which way am I going to go? Which way am I going to go? I think I'm going to go down on these. I mean, honestly, maybe I'll just do it the way they had it. Because, boy, did this thing run. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to do exactly what they had. And that is, this one was down, and the other one was in. All right. Mm, yeah, here we go. And a pin. Yeah, I always know I should put these pins in first because my hands are small or big. I'm trying to put these little tiny pins in. So it's got a pin for the stop and a pin for the stop on the closed side as well. Open and closed. All right, let's do this other bearing. So this other bearing was down as well. I need to turn. Yeah, see how that pin's turning on me? Dirty dog. There we go. That's where it needs to be, right there. Okay, bearing. This one was down as well, like that. And, oh, man, a lot of these should have went in beforehand. That's all right. Just move gently. <laughs> of course. Okay. Man, I'm so excited. I'm excited to get back this back together and keep this this moving because this odd little G10 knife the action the grip the grittiness of this G10 I, I mean I'm just really digging this knife which I mean to be honest I don't know about the lime green I mean it, it very well may talk me into um Figuring out how to die scales. I mean, it, the 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 lime green does kind of make it look like a gas station knife, I guess, sorta. But I mean, I don't know. What do I care? What it looks like. 
I mean, I don't, I don't hate the lime green, to be honest. There's nothing about it that makes me go, oh, I couldn't carry that. It's too, it's too limey or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, goodness. Okay. Everything's really tight. Let's get everything put away. We'll finish checking it. Yeah, we're going to check it out. Maybe run a towel on it. I don't think there's any excess oil or anything hanging around. I got her cleaned up pretty good. All right. SL16 D2. The action on this thing is just phenomenal, wonderful. For a G10 D2 knife, it's just stunningly good. Um, ergonomics, so really grippy here. There's not a huge finger guard, but because of the grippiness of this, I'm going to say it's it's right in here at a confident grip. I, you know, plus the shortness of it, it's the back of it's tucked into the hand. And so if I was to go forward with this knife and meet resistance, I do believe I could maintain this grip. I have a fair expectation to be able to do that. So I'm going to say that it's, you know, that it's confidence right in there. Uh, let's check the pocket clip. Pretty confident that this pocket clip is going to take care of business too. Yeah, it's over that thick material and then boom in the pocket. Really deep carry, just the tiniest little bit sticking out and it's got a grip. I mean, it's going to hold. Wherever you put this, it's going to stay. Thin material, same thing. Plenty of tension, it's going to hold right where you put it. My favorite position back here, outside right corner, again. Yeah, it's really holding well. It's nice in there. So, pocket clip is pretty awesome. Let's check it for safety. Can I catch that blade? I mean, really pushing in. I can barely catch it there, so I'm not going to take issue with that. And the tip is buried behind, right behind the backspacer like they did that just right it's just hiding the tip of that blade so safe wise you can put it in your pocket you're not going to make contact with the tip the back and the pocket clip is also a pass with lots of tension against that really aggressive uh grit on that g10 so wonderful wonder if it's sharp i mean it's a deep thin blade i'm going to expect this to cut pretty good gonna need a strop i already know yeah i mean it's got a booger well let's handle that let's go ahead and put it on film so i need a little bit of compound on here i use this white on the softer side just like a crayon rub it in there this i've had this the down below in the notes this strop and comes with this compound and the green for the other side and so let's run a few passes and we'll just do it live and see if we can improve this knife. I'm pretty sure as much of a burr that I felt there that this is going to be markedly improved. And it should, should be there already. Let's check it out. Right on that curve, man. There's something there. Let's uh, let's get it again. I'm gonna be a little more aggressive on that part of the blade, right there. You know, when when I'm being challenged on the strop, just a little thing. I don't know if anybody else does it, but I like to lay it flat and keep it sturdy versus holding it in my hand. I feel better about what I was able to accomplish here. I think that I I should be good here. 
and it's just a burr. I'm not sharpening it. I'm just trying to take off that little bit of metal that was left behind when they ran it through the sharpener. What do you think? I think that handled it, right? So, I mean, all told, what I have about seven passes, I did get a little more aggressive with it that second time. And when I'm doing that, I like to lay it flat. So then my objective is to match up that that curve really sticky now. Yeah, so sharp. Price and availability. So this obviously is through the six leaf auctions down below. There's a link also in the notes for the six leaf sellers. There's two of them. But if you go to the one, they'll be there. They currently have live auctions for these. And... I paid, what did I pay for this? I paid $40 for this. I, I, I said it earlier, I think I'll mention it one more time. It's smaller than I thought it was. Looking at the images, I thought this was a bigger knife. But I'm not disappointed just because it's such an awesome knife the action on this thing is just i mean it's stunning man it's right up there with some of the best button lock action just wonderful so last round sl16 and d2 steel uh g10 it's got some kind of nice coating on there i like the look of it appreciate you watching